Hey YouTubers, I'm starting a series called Getting to Know Your D500 and today I'm going to discuss about the touch screen. Before we get into the D500 screen, the reason why I have this antique here is because this is an old palm style Sony Clie, if that's how you pronounce it. For those of you old enough to remember these particular devices, they were great for its time with the exception of the screen. This is what you call a resistive touch screen. It requires a certain amount of accuracy as well as pressure in order to actually carry out commands here and it was just not great. There are still certain devices I think if I'm not mistaken I think Infinity's Q60 series actually has a um, resistive touchscreen as well as certain I think a Canon camcorders and they're just not very good in comparison to the capacitive touchscreen that is on the majority of the smartphones out there as well as the D500. Now some of you were probably surprised and mentioned in my unboxing video about why you're putting on a different screen protector do you not want to use the touchscreen. So one thing you got to know about capacitive touchscreens is that they literally are touch sensitive. It's a minor touch of your skin will operate whereas this if you touch it very lightly it won't even work. It does require a certain amount of pressure. Case in point I'm going to demonstrate this. Took a shot earlier of the scene. Apologies for the color it's off because I do have it calibrated for the fluorescent light but here you can see I still have the original factory screen protector on. No problems with zooming in, zooming out, pinching. Pinching. Let me actually zoom in. Scroll around. As you can see there, no problems. Just a very light touch. Okay, now I'm going to actually even demonstrate this so that you can see. Unfortunately, I drank too much coffee today. But it's just the lightest of touch and it's good enough to operate this. Like I said, no different than the majority of the smartphones. Well, actually it should be every recently released smartphone should have a capacitive touchscreen. And as you know, some of those actually have fairly thick screen protectors. They're actually glass now instead of the simple old style which was just simply a thin film. Given that I really wanted to protect the screen quickly, I ordered this off of Amazon. It's called Bessie. This one is billed as fitting the D750. Now one thing you got to understand is that when they say that a screen protector is made for a certain camera, it's not necessarily about specific technology or whatnot. It's really about the dimension of the screen because they need to make sure that it's the exact fit, right? You don't want one that's like a little bit off or too big, then it won't fit on. So that's why it says it's made for XYZ camera or XYZ phone. It's not because, oh, this has some special technology in there, so it's compatible with your camera and whatnot. Now, there are differences in terms of the coating. You may have some anti-reflective coating, some matte finishes, some super glossy finishes. So there is a difference there. But again, like I said, it's not about that, oh, okay, because you have a matte coating, it doesn't work on a specific phone or a specific camera. It's really about the dimensions of the screen. So again, I picked this up for the D750 because I actually wanted the top screen protector. This was supposed to come in two pieces. I'm going to use that on the 750 and I'm going to use the back one on the D500. So I'm in the bathroom, again using the shower trick so that way it dampens the air and reduces dust. I'm not going to bore you with the full details of that. I've already covered that in a previous video, but I'm getting ready to install this Bessie screen protector. Picked this off of Amazon as I mentioned earlier. They claim it's a uh, tempered glass, but to be honest with you, I really doubt that. So this side with the peel off goes onto the screen itself. This other side is what will face you. But normally there should be a second layer here. As you can see, this was for a D750. So this is the LCD protector for the top layer on the D750. It comes with two stickers. Peel one off, slap it on, squeeze out any bubbles and whatnot, peel the second layer off. Now I can kind of understand why they didn't include the second layer is because they probably thought this is a thick, to me they say tempered glass, but to me it's like more like plastic. So typically this solid piece should not incur any bubbles. You put it on, it'll just self seal on. Now the problem with that is although you can't see it, it already comes with scratches. So unfortunately, not living up to quality already. I'm not too pleased with this. But since I need a screen protector, I'm going to go ahead and use it anyway. All right, I got that installed. It went on pretty simply. It did self seal right away. However, I'm not crazy about the fact that this is a fingerprint magnet and also the fact that it scratches easily, but we'll see how it holds up. Let's go ahead and test it out now. There goes the screen. The color does not seem to be adversely affected. The color balance isn't exactly right because I do have it tuned for the bathroom right now, but let's go ahead and get this into live view. Take a shot of the alcohol bottle. As you saw there. 
it took the picture, detected my touch, no problem scrolling. Let's go ahead and zoom in, scroll around. As you see, just very gently, okay? It's just like your smartphone screen, so it doesn't matter that there's a layer of thickness on top of it. Again, you have to consider how many millions of smartphones out there have screen protectors on them, and some of them are relatively thick, like this one. So, again, demonstrating that it has no impact. Now, of course, your mileage may vary, right? I gotta always put that disclaimer, otherwise I'll have someone coming back who purchased a particular screen protector, but overall, like I said, I just think that the warning was just out of an overabundance of caution because they can't guarantee the quality of the screen protector that's being used. Thus, they wanted to protect themselves and go ahead and said, well, you know what, don't protect it because your screen is good enough. But here, as you can see, no problem at all. Scrolling back and forth. In case you're curious how the D750 fared, overall, that one was pretty good. It was a little tougher, obviously, than the stiff one to put on, but I did manage to trap a bubble in there because of a dust particle. I peeled it off, but it seems like there's just a tad little piece there that never went away. It's a little hard to catch on the camera, so I'm not even going to bother, but um, there's a little snag over there that you could probably see. So overall, the quality is, mm, like, probably give it 3 out of 5 stars, but we'll see how it holds up in the long run. As an example of a resistive touchscreen, here is an old Epson Artisan A35 printer, and this touchscreen is resistive. So, it's the older technology, as you can see, I'm touching around here, but lightly, of course. And it's nothing at all like a capacitive touchscreen, where the slightest touch would invoke a functionality. This, I would actually have to physically press really hard. in order to make it work. And even then, sometimes it's a little flaky. That's how these touchscreens are. So you guys growing up now with the capacitive touchscreens, you're really spoiled, man. Now to emphasize what I mean about the overabundance of caution, as you already know, I already have a screen protector applied on the D500, as you can see there. It's a reasonably thick, you know, they say tempered glass, but again, to me, it's just plastic. So I have a sheet of glass here. This is about, I don't know, 1.7 millimeters thick, roughly, 1.7, 1.8, okay. Going to overlay that on top of the D500's touchscreen. Then we go into the touchscreen mode. As you can see, glass is on here. And lo and behold, what do you know? It works. So that's the beauty of the capacitive touchscreens. So there, that's my emphasis about the use of a protective screen. In the end, it's a very personal choice. It's just like people who don't like to use lens filters. I like to keep my equipment clean and protected. So although this particular one, like I said, it's a fingerprint magnet. So I'll probably be on the hunt for another one. But like I said, I think I've demonstrated my point that even a thick touchscreen shouldn't reasonably impact your touchscreen. Bottom line, it's a, like I said, it's a totally personal preference, but for me, I'll be keeping this on. So now we're going to get into the features and limitations of the touchscreen. The most obvious use case is when you're playing back your photos and you want to swipe left, swipe right, in order to see and preview your previous pictures. Now currently, I do have the car loaded with the shots that I took from my friend's wedding from the D750. Now the reason why I want to get into that is that I took this shot this was fresh from a D750. I plopped it onto the SD card and plopped it into the D500. However, you'll notice that it doesn't actually give the information here as to the size of the picture, nor can I zoom into it. So, I don't know, maybe some compatibility issues, but yet, here's one I took of um, Tanji just now. That's my dog. I figure for a change I'd focus on something less boring than my SBE5 sound card. But here, I'm not focused on her, I'm actually focused on the curtains in the back. You can see that I can zoom in by double tapping, or of course, swiping, pinching, pinch out to zoom in, and pinch in to zoom out. But the point of this is, again, you can see there, it will actually give me 
the size of the JPEG, but yet again, like I said, from the pictures that transferred over from the D750, I don't get that information, nor, like I said, can I zoom in. But getting back to the exact features of the touchscreen, as mentioned, you can do that, zoom in further, so that way you could kind of scroll through the pictures as you want, and, and when you find one that you want, you could go ahead and click on it to display it. So I'm going to go ahead and pick one that I took underneath the um, boardwalk. That is pretty much the main functionality within the playback. One other thing that you can do, and unfortunately the touchscreen doesn't work with the menus. I figured the rationale for that I'm guessing is probably because the menu, they literally lift and shift, right? It's the exact same size and structure as from the previous cameras dating back to, who knows, like the D7000 or earlier. And the size is not really exactly I don't know, you probably get a lot of misses because of the size of these menus. So they would probably have to do some future firmware update to enlarge it slightly to accommodate a natural finger width to get that perfectly. So I don't know, maybe there was just limitations of time as well, because as you know, the D500 was delayed, but you cannot actually activate the menus or navigate through it through the touch screen. One thing that you can do through the touch screen though is to type with it. So let's just say you want to attach your copyright information. You could go ahead and input that. So I'll go ahead and input. And this is so much better than scrolling with the wheel like I used to do with um, even on the D750. That is awesome. However, though, one thing that is flaky that just goes to show that these guys are just not software engineers is the delete key. So delete key, if you're here, you'd expect like if you keep hitting delete, it'll just keep going back, but it doesn't. It actually just stays here and deletes that single field that's currently highlighted. So um, really hope that they would come up with a future update to change that because that's just, that's crazy, okay? It just doesn't make sense to program that. You know, I used to work in software QA and I used to obviously care about the UI and usability of software. One thing that used to drive me nuts, a little segue here, bear with me, is that you go to the ATM machine and you try to withdraw money and it forces you to input cents when you clearly cannot withdraw that. Why in the world would you do that? It's just such a bad design. I mean, okay, to be fair, it's probably, again, old software because I figured they use the same logic for inputting cents when you're making a deposit, so they force that upon you when you're making a withdrawal, but I just always thought that that was a really bad design. But anyway, I digress. Getting back into this, so like I said, that's two use cases so far. One is during playback, second is inputting text. The last one is obviously, the best is the live view mode. Danji? So again, I figured, I have a better subject than my boring sound card to play with. Now, the one thing that you would want to do is get into this mode where you see this menu here on the left corner. There's three modes. First one is to focus and take a picture immediately once upon acquiring focus. As you saw there, I'm going to focus back on the curtain in the background. Okay. And right now, I don't know if you hear that buzzing noise. My D500 does that every so often. I haven't figured out what it is yet, but if any of you folks know, by all means, drop a comment. The next mode, if you tap here, is just purely the autofocus. So let's just say you didn't want to take the picture. You merely wanted to acquire focus. So anywhere you touch, it'll acquire the focus without taking the picture. Last but not least is to actually shut off that autofocus touchscreen. Now the reason for this mode is that you may want to shut this off but still keep the touchscreen enabled for the playback as well as the text input so this is pretty cool so that it doesn't bother you in case you just want to preview but you don't want to focus or accidentally touch it. So one other really cool feature about this touchscreen is that you can actually acquire white balance information when you want to do your custom white balance. So you press and hold the white balance key until you see this down here then wherever you click on the touchscreen it will acquire the white balance information. So let's just say I want to acquire for the curtains now. Slightly different, or perhaps the shade down here. Now this isn't the perfect example because the scene, again, obviously I want to acquire the white balance information for my dog, Danji. So I'll put that onto a fur. And right now it's a mix of fluorescent as well as LED lights, so again, lighting's a little bit off and the color is not exactly perfect, but you can see what I'm doing here, right? 
want to really throw the camera off, give it something that it can't really acquire white balance information, you'll get the you'll get either bad coloring or that error message as you saw before. But this is awesome because let's just say you frame your picture perfectly but your white balance is slightly off and you did want to do custom white balance you don't have to take your camera and focus on the point because typically it was the center point so this way you don't even need to move your camera you could just adjust and acquire your white balance information without even moving your camera awesome and when you're done with the white balance you simply press the button again you're back into your picture taking mode so come back here Hold on, let me see if I can get her attention. Danji? Danji? Come here. Danji? Nah, she's ignoring me. She's a little upset that I roused her from her sleep to get her to model for me, so I apologize. Come here, Danji. Danji. I bet if I had food, you would look. Yep, go ahead. Ignore me. I think I've previously played with the touchscreen on a Panasonic G5. That was very quick the focus was amazing but like I said for a DSLR this is clearly a step in the right direction and I don't know if those professionals want to claim oh, I never use touch screens and touch screens are for sissies or whatever and because I'm a professional suddenly my neck and my limbs are super flexible so I don't even need an articulating screen well good for you professional keep on doing what you do but for the rest of us folks I really appreciate this touchscreen feature as well as the articulating screen even if it is not full articulation and it's just um, a tilt function but still this has been absolutely phenomenal especially during videography where I had the camera set at a particular height or you know again common use cases where you're trying to shoot above a crowd now you can shoot above the crowd and touch exactly where you want to focus instead of having your hand at an awkward angle, right? Because typically you would just stick it straight up. This is just absolutely awesome. One thing I did want to show you also before we moved on is the video feature. Currently, I am in live view picture mode. I'm going to go into video mode and same thing. Of course, it's not going to take a picture. You're going to acquire your focus depending on where you are. Turn it off or on. That's it. There is no shutter function here in the video mode. But that white balance still works even in video mode as well. So again, super awesome. Now, I currently have this in 1080p. One thing I did want to show you guys was the additional crop when you go into 4K mode. So it's another one and a half times crop for a total of 2.25. And as you can see, she's now out of the frame, or at least her face is. Daddy. Oh, there she goes. Let's focus on her face. All right, so there you are. This is in movie mode. Come back into picture taking mode. Put it into the shutter. Daddy. Good girl. Take a picture of her. And there you go. Now you could actually disable the touch screen by coming into your setup menu, going to touch controls, and from here, you could see that you could disable it here. One additional feature here is that you could change the way that you scroll, whether it's ascending or descending. So in America, we're accustomed to reading the book from left to right. We would pick that from left to right. So thereby, when we scroll from left to right, the pages go up. And when you scroll from right to left, pages go back down. However, in the land of the rising sun, they actually read their books from right to left. So you have that option as well. And if there's another country out there that utilizes that, I apologize. I don't, I'm not aware of it. Feel free to throw in the comment. But here you can see that as I scroll this way, the numbers are actually getting larger. Because, like I said, they're accustomed to reading it from right to left. And then as I flip it the other way, the numbers descend. So, that pretty much completes this tutorial with regards to the touchscreen. I'll probably be working on the SnapBridge functionality next, but by all means, feel free to make requests. I'll do my best to oblige them within reasonable means, of course. And let me know how you're enjoying these videos or not. I always appreciate constructive feedback. And yes, as you can see, she's reached her limit. So thank you so much, Tanji.
If you enjoy my videos and want to see more, please like, subscribe, and share. I typically don't go into that, but I could definitely use a little boost with my channel right now, so I appreciate the assistance. Thanks so much, guys.